Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So, time for a new top 10 and this is going to be the 20th century. Yes, modern. Well, yeah, so the first three, yeah. One of them, I would even say, is a straddler. But, and I debated where I was going to put it in the other top 10. And then I had enough for the not the earlier top 10, so I pushed it forward. What am I going to do now? So, yeah, it's, it's terrible. So, anyway, but the other two, are, I would date 1900, so I'm going with them being in the 20th century. And then we'll move on, and, and yeah, I will get modern, I promise. So, um, so with that said, let's get on and look at the first piece. So this is my um, cheater in a way, in that, um, yeah, according to Whitefriar's book, the Leslie Jackson book, they say this, there's a bottle like this, and they say it's 1880s, but this has got a hallmark top, which says 1907. So based on the top, I'm allowing it in. Yeah, my rules etc etc my house my rules I think it is anyway so yeah so this is like a little perfume bottle or something like that it's got a nice little pantal. Um so yeah it's Edwardian it's got this little top this is the top that makes it I bought this at an antiques fair I think in about 97 or something like that and I saw it and I thought and it had twelve pounds, a little label hanging down, and I was saying twelve pounds, and I thought that can't be right. There must be something wrong with it. And I picked it up, and I had a really good look because I thought it must be broken. And I looked at the at the hallmark, and the hallmark has got a very rare hallmark on it. I don't know if I can get it to focus. Um, can I get it to focus if I put my hand here? And it says J P and S S's, which is James Powell and Sons, um, and it's got a London 1907 mark on it. So yeah, so this is White James Powell and Sons Limited is the name of the company that has the White Fries brand. So yeah, this is very um, rare stopper. It's got a little nut inside it. Can you see? Um, and a little cork inside that, which is now a bit dried out. It, it was actually a bit tighter when I first got it. Um, but here we are, over 25 years later, a bit further into its life. And um, and it's gone from being not, not an antique into being an antique. And it's a bit looser now. You can, you, I think I could just about pick it up with it. Now it's just about going in now. But anyway, yeah, so this is a really rare thing. The stopper is what makes it rare. The bottle is pretty rare too, in combination, uber rare. I've um, I've seen one other for sale, like about 15 years ago with the stopper. Um, and they wanted, yeah, 700 pounds for it, which I, I suspect is way too much, but you know that nine pounds is not a right price. It's it's just so so elegant, so delicate. Um, when you think, yeah, I'm, I is a cheat because this is an 1880s. It doesn't look Victorian at all. It looks very, especially. I suspect the stoppers may not have originally. It may not have had a stopper like this at all, but it probably didn't originally look like this. This looks very Art Nouveau. And I'm not sure the Art Nouveau period started in the 1880s. So, yeah, it's just such a sweet little thing. And um, it's one of those things that you go out hunting stuff for and can't believe it when you find. So, yeah. And up until I saw the one for sale about 15 years ago, I'd never seen another one. So, yeah, stuff is super rare. Also saying that, if anybody's got another one of these bottles, I do want it because I do have another stopper. So here's my um, next piece, which I would date to about 1900. Very Art Nouveau as well. Um, 
I bought it because I thought, ooh, pretty, pretty. Anyway, um, I later found out, I found it in the back of the um, John Walsh Walsh book by Eric Reynolds in the little tiny pictures. There was like a tiny picture of this, you know, where it's the whole picture is about three quarters of an inch square and this little tiny drawing away. That's it. Anyway, so it's a bit subtle from here, but let me bring it a bit closer and you'll see what I mean by that. So pretty, look at this. Look at the shooting stars running down it. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, they're cute. And then if I go down on the stopper as well, look at that. Isn't that sweet? Little tricorn pouring lip. Let me show you what I mean by tricorn. If I pull that off, you can see it's like a three way one. Yep, like a tricorn hat. It's called tricorn pouring lip. And or trefoil is another word, I suppose, for that shape. But, um, further away there we go yeah it's it's just so pretty um, unfortunately John Walsh Walsh factory drawings don't give dates I go with 1900 I think it's about there um, so yeah it, it's just so pretty I really like it it's one of the ones that's prominent on my shelf in my room so yeah So here is another one that I usually date to 1900. It might be a bit earlier, might be a bit later. I have tried to find out um, who this is by without any success. I, before anybody starts saying Stevens and Williams, I did put it on the Stevens and Williams Facebook group and got a rather abrupt no. So not that it's still lovely let me just show you the stopper first just to show you the quality of what we're looking at here so this this, this kind of cutting is usually called rock crystal it's very it's like an intaglio type cutting can you see the little flowers chrysanthemum type flowers around the stopper super quality fitting the fact that the stopper is so clean makes me think, yeah, it's probably post-1900. Um, but yeah, very, and also it's got a writhen underneath the flowers. It's actually molded with a writhen pattern. And then, let me show you the jug itself. Again, super quality cutting. And you see, a little, it's got uh, some of these olives cut into it, a bit like the um, Christopher Dresser drug we were looking at, but just little patches running around in a frieze around here. Then you've got these little diamonds cut into it with lines in between. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? So difficult to do with all this. And then more flowers. Isn't that pretty? And then, yeah, they've it's got a writhe on top. And then they've cut into it as well to give it a kind of more of a 3D effect. And then a little bit of cutting around there as well. Can you see? And then more cutting around the rim. Isn't that fantastic? Um, yeah, this came on eBay as a buy it now for £15. And I couldn't hit the button fast enough. I did check condition first because it could have been a wreck. You know, there could have been a huge crack through it, but it said the condition was good. So isn't that lovely? Yep. I do have some other rock crystal pieces. Actually, my wife is the big fan of this type of glass and um, the best bits are owned by her. And I'm not... It wouldn't be, it's her glass, I'm not going to show it. I might show it in a video and say it's her glass, but not as my top 10, because obviously that's her top 10. Anyway, yeah, it's lovely to get it closer, closer, closer. There we go. Too close. There we go. Isn't that 
Yeah. And it is a bit like the Stevens and Williams ones. The Stevens and Williams tend to have tighter handles. I know that. Let me drag you something out just to show you what I mean by that. Yeah, it's kind of a bit tighter, isn't it? But, um, you know what I mean? It kind of curls around on itself more than that one does. But, um, yeah, I've been told it's definitely not. It's not good enough, is what I was told. So, there you go. Oh my God, you might be saying, Kevin's come into the 20th century. And I have. So, this is kind of English and kind of not English. Um, or is it or isn't it? Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, this is made in Sweden by Stromberghuyten. And the designer, we're not 100% certain, but we think the designer is a guy called Hugh Duncook. Captain Hugh Duncook, to be exact. And... Um, he had a an import company called Elverson that was importing glass in the Swedish glass into the UK, and he was involved in all sorts of things with um, with Whitefriars and self promotion. And he, he appears in some of my books and things. Um, anyway, this is one of his pieces. He has actually registered it as a pattern in the UK in 1931. The colour is straw. Stromberg's Heighton used this colour a lot and it's kind of like a off amber colour. It's got a peg stopper. Look at that. Just a peg but it is fitted so it does it fits pretty good for a Swedish stopper. And um, yeah I quite like the peg stoppers you don't get not many tea cans. Orifers use them a lot. And it's got this funny little optical neck. And then it's a flask shape. So, if I, yeah, that stopped moving. So it's actually not round. And it's got, and when you grab it, you can actually, it's got a dimple in the middle, so you can grab it like that. So it's too big to put in your back pocket, but it is a flask shape, shape thing. And and it is this one is fully marked in that underneath written here is scratched the word Elverson and then the reg number for it. So yeah, this is very clearly what it is. And um, I think it's really cool. I love Stromberg's height and I have a pile of then decanters and vases and I think Hugh Duncook was a bit of a hero. He was bringing modern glass to the British public in the 30s. This does not look like Art Deco. Far from it. Um, and most of the rest of his stuff doesn't look like Art Deco either. In fact, some of it looks like you can go down to Ikea and buy it today. Um, yeah. And you can see he's actually blowing mould. There's a little bit of a rise here where it was where the moulds joined together. It's got a bit of a, oh, you can just about, can you see the ridge just appearing there? It's, it's an optical effect that's showing you the ridge, but there is one there. If I do that, you can see it, can't you? Um, and I love the way this is finished. Actually, let me stop a second. I'm gonna go and get another piece. So this is cheating, cause it's two in one, but look at this other one here. This is another one of his designs and, um, or is it his, or is it a Stromberg's item one out of the factory? Uh, I'm trying to remember the lady, lady's name. Um, something Stromberg. Gerda, I think it is. Yes, I think it's Gerda Stromberg. Anyway, so yeah, this is, might be one of hers, but look at this. With that same lovely optical pouring lip. Weighs a ton. Definitely of a different period. Doesn't feel like 1930s, um, but yeah, that's my favorite one of the two. I love the straw color. Um, it's kind of, how can I say this? I 
I like collars, right, because of from a period because it's a colour that people would have known from that period. How can I, yeah, is that right? It was part of the background of that time, and this is one of those. Yeah, this kind of brownish, yeah, muddy brown. There was a lot of muddy browns and muddy greens and stuff like that in that time period, and this fits into that um, rather dull amber. Not all of the 20s and 30s was bright um, art deco colors and everything. Some of it, a lot of it was this, this muddy look. So um, yeah, I like it because of that, because it's of its time, that's not very popular now, but it would fit in someone's home from then. So this is number five and um, yes, it is a piece of art glass, not tableware. And um, yeah, don't, don't, don't get excited. This is the only piece of art glass I'm gonna show you. Um, this too is Stromberg's Titan. It's also in straw color. And um, I have a lot of Stromberg Titan vases and this is my favorite. Um, one, it's such a statement piece, and two, it was a present from my brother-in-law, who also is a bit of a collector, and he actually picked this out of his collection for me because I think he spotted that I'd got some interest in it. So this is the 12-inch one, which is an absolute monster. It doesn't even look 12. I mean, in fact, have I got a ruler in here in my drawer? This doesn't look like it's 12 inches. Oh yeah, it is. So yeah, it is 12 inches. It looks bigger. Uh, let me show you a six inch one just so you can get an idea of how truly colossal it is. That's a six inch vase. That's a 12 inch vase. It weighs a ton. Um, and I've had to pull the camera back to get it in. Let me um, flip it over. You can see it's got like a optical interior, six sided. Had a very kind of plasticky look to it because there is so much glass in there. Yeah. Um, it's got a nice scalloped edge. I don't know if you can see that very well. If I tip it up a bit, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah, these are, and I think it's a 3053 is the patent number. And um, yeah, it's in the Elverson patent book for it being imported into the UK. Um, and it comes in four sizes. I've got all four, so it comes in six, eight, and ten. And um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic looking piece of glass, especially against a white background. I have another gray one in this size as well, but this one was a present. I like this, it looks really nice. And yeah, again, again, it goes with that aesthetic of brown things from that time. Um, so yeah, I really like it. I don't know who he was selling. I think Widart might have been selling some of the stuff for him, but um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Just the look of it and the size of it. I said, it don't get, don't get too excited. I am not going to show you any more art glass. Um, and even when I'm showing you a piece, it's kind of objectively might be a bit boring, a bit plain, but it's massive. So, and it's difficult to, when you say something's 12 inches tall, it doesn't really feel like that, but this is like a, I don't even know. No, I can't even pick it up with one hand with my arm out. So yeah, it weighs a ton. And um, in fact, I don't have it on the shelves with the other ones because the shelves, I've got them, are from the 1960s and I'm concerned about them with this weight. So that's how much it weighs. Actually, I've just popped out to the kitchen and borrowed my wife's kitchen scales and it weighs eight and a half pounds or if you're in kilos, 3.8 kilos. So yeah, it's a chunk of glass. 
There we have it, the first five from my top 10 from the 20th century. Yeah, the first three might be considered a bit of a swizz, but you have to give me that. But I promise you, the next five, yeah, it's going to be very deco, very mid-century modern. I'm going to be a modern person, I promise. I promise, honestly. And um, so with that said, no references below because I didn't use any books. And yes, please remember to like and subscribe because it helps my channel. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching and have a really good night. Good night.